say. There's no such thing as Istanbul. There are Istanbuls, plural, you know, clashing, competing. It's like a matryoshka doll. You open one, inside there's another Istanbul. There's another Istanbul. And in order to understand all those layers, you need to spend time. You need to pay attention to, to its secrets and silences and ruins and remnants. Say. So the word I want to talk about today is one that is very close to my heart and one that I feel very attached to, and that word is Istanbul. When we trace the origins of the word, of course, it goes all the way back to its Greek origins. It's a phrase, most probably meaning to the city, going to the city or within the city. But Istanbul is also a city with many names, multiple names. It was Constantinopolis or Constantinia. And in classical antiquity, it was Byzantium. It is an old city. It is an ancient city with many, many, many layers. It is a city of intersections in which so many cultures and civilizations have met. They have sometimes coexisted and sometimes they could not. At the same time, today, it is one of the most populous cities in the world. Uh, we're talking about over 15 million people living there. We're talking about a city, a metropolis that is more than thousands and thousands of years old. It is also one of the noisiest cities across the world. Um, when I was living in Istanbul, I had this small flat. Uh, when I first moved to the city, it was uh, on a place called Kazanji, which is very close to Taksim Square. And I never forget it. This, this was a place that was even noisier, you know, there was even more noise around at night than during the day. Always people talking on the street, cars honking, the traffic. It's a city that literally never, ever sleeps. I was there on the night of the earthquake. And I never forget that because our, first of all, I need to tell you that our street was quite um, multicultural. It was quite diverse. This was a place that was mostly populated by minorities. In the past, there were many Jewish, Armenian, Greek families living there, but many of them over time, of course, had to leave. You know, they did not feel welcome. They were, uh, many of them were driven out or they had to leave. In 1970s, this was a place that was mostly populated by sexual minorities. There was a big trans community there. There was a big LGBTQ plus community there. Again, many of them left. In 1990s, feminists moved into this neighborhood. Lots of maybe progressive artists moved in. And over time, they also left. So living on a street like that with such a deep, rich, but also heartbreaking history, I think made me think that this was not a city that was static and fixed, but it almost felt like a boat, like a ship, you know? We were all passengers. We came and we went. Istanbul, of course, is a city of um, stories, lots of stories, but it's also a city of silences. There are lots of ruins and remnants. And I also think it's a city of collective amnesia. Having a rich history does not mean you have a strong memory of the past. We are a society of collective amnesia. So for me as a storyteller, it was a city that was teeming with untold stories. In my eyes, Istanbul has always been a she city, you know, um, and people sometimes find that strange. But there is a literary tradition that goes all the way back to the Ottoman times and the Byzantium times in which the city has always been portrayed either as a goddess or has been associated with female spirits or in the eyes of Ottoman poets. Again, it has been always a female character. There's a part of me that wants to revive that literary tradition. Another part of me believes that the soul of the city is female, but another part of me um, wants to reclaim the city, you know, reclaim the urban spaces, public spaces, because unfortunately, today when you walk around, streets belong to men, public squares belong to men, coffee houses, tea houses belong to men. And I think it's very important that we have women in the public space, minorities in the public space, equal representation and visibility in our urban spaces. 
Uh, as I mentioned, Istanbul has always been important in my work, not as a background decor or a you know passive landscape, just the opposite, as a personality, as a strong she personality of her own. In my books, such as The Flea Palace, The Bastard of Istanbul, The Architect's Apprentice, I have always tried to understand the people who have been pushed to the margins in Istanbul, you know, pay attention to the periphery rather than the center. So rather than following the Istanbul that is presented in touristic brochures, I'm interested in the underbelly of the story, in the untold stories of the city. And in that regard, I think there's no such thing as Istanbul. There are Istanbuls, plural, you know clashing, competing. It's like a matryoshka doll. You open one, inside there's another Istanbul. There's another Istanbul. And in order to understand all those layers, you need to spend time. You need to pay attention to, to its secrets and silences and ruins and remnants. Um, I want to read a little bit from one of my earlier novels, 10 minutes 38 seconds in this strange world. This is the part where I talk about how I see the city. Istanbul was an illusion, a magician's trick gone wrong. Istanbul was a dream that existed solely in the minds of hashish eaters. In truth, there was no Istanbul. There were multiple Istanbuls, struggling, competing, clashing, each perceiving that in the end, only one could survive. There was, for instance, an ancient Istanbul designed to be crossed on foot or by boat, the city of itinerant dervishes, fortune tellers, matchmakers, seafarers, cotton fluffers, rug beaters, and porters with wicker baskets on their backs. There was modern Istanbul, an urban sprawl overrun with cars and motorcycles whizzing back and forth, construction trucks laden with building materials for more shopping centers, skyscrapers, industrial sites. Imperial Istanbul versus plebeian Istanbul, global Istanbul versus parochial Istanbul, cosmopolitan Istanbul versus Philistine Istanbul, heretical Istanbul versus pious Istanbul, macho Istanbul versus a feminine Istanbul that adopted Aphrodite, goddess of desire and also of strife, as its symbol and protector. Then, there was the Istanbul of those who had left long ago, sailing to faraway ports. For them, the city would always be a metropolis made of memories, myths and longings, forever elusive, like a lover's face receding in the mist. Say, Say.